The movie star married me to spite her first love. Only because I had some similarity to her first love. After marriage, when she uttered a desire for the spicy chicken dish, I'd cook it for her. Even if it meant braving the rain with a high fever. When she was almost hit by a car, I didn't hesitate to throw myself in front of her, almost losing my life. When rumors flew about her first love, I did not become angry, but helped her to clarify the situation. Because of this, many people laughed, calling me a pitiful and ridiculous clown. But I didn't care, as long as she stayed by my side, until later. She removed the mole at the corner of her eye because of a remark from her first love. I resolutely decided to divorce her. She asked me with tears in her eyes, asking why. I caressed her eyes and calmly said, because you're not like her anymore. Everyone knew Willow married me, just to spite her rumored first love. Makoto wanted to study abroad, and Willow was not willing to give up her promising future in the stalemate. No one was willing to make the first move. So out of spite, Willow married me, who had some similarities to Makoto, on the day Willow and I married. All news media reported it as a pity. Willow and Makoto, to lovers, couldn't end up together, and I seemed to have been unanimously regarded by everyone as Makoto's replacement. It would be a quick divorce, they said, but it seems that the development of things is the opposite of what everyone thinks. Willow slowly started to showcase our bits and pieces together on all platforms. She held me with affection, was willing to learn to cook for me, told the whole world she had the best husband, and even thought of quitting her career to have a pair of children for me. Just when we were at our sweetest and happiest, Willow's first love returned. They were reunited after a long separation and patched things up dot dot in the ambiguous night. There was an intense love affair. The day Makoto returned home was the third anniversary of Willow and my marriage. I looked at the table full of spicy food that Willow loves, and next to it was a calendar marking today's special day. Three years of marriage, I took out my phone to call Willow. But as soon as the phone lit up, Willow's call popped up first. The voice on the other side was as sweet and gentle as always, as if full of infinite love. George, you know, my bestie is going to get married in a few days. Today she said she wanted to have a singles party, no family members allowed. I'll have to come back later, you should rest early. My mouth moved a couple of times, and eventually, after a moment of silence, I responded, OK. Double quotes, I sat in front of the restaurant. I picked up the chopsticks, but couldn't bring myself to start eating. It seemed my stomach saw the plethora of spicy peppers in front of it and started crapping in fear. That's right. It seemed that even I had forgotten. I couldn't eat spicy food. And yet, Willow loves nothing more than spicy food. I had no appetite and took out my phone to kill time. But soon, my hand scrolling on the phone suddenly froze. Willow's best friend posted a group photo at the bar. In the corner of the photo was Makoto who had been abroad for three years, and a pair of fair hands affectionately holding his arm, leaning her head on his shoulder. It seemed to be deliberately cropped, only revealing a hand and a bit of a side face. However, that tear mole made the thorn in my heart brutally stab my heart. I didn't know when I had dozed off in the living room. Suddenly the door opened, and I was awakened. Willow turned on the light in the living room, looked at me in surprise. George. Why haven't you gone to sleep yet? I smiled faintly, I accidentally fell asleep in the living room. She complained a bit, and yet sounded a bit worried. You'll catch a cold sleeping in the living room. Are you trying to make me worrying about you getting ill? I was silent for a moment, I won't do it in future. Only then did Willow notice the meal on the dining table next to her and the date circled on the calendar. She looked guilty. George, I'm sorry, I forgot today is our wedding anniversary. I smiled, it's okay, we will have many more wedding anniversaries in the future. Willow's expression froze for a moment, and then immediately reverted back to normal. She threw her arms wide open, acting spoiled as she usually did, and threw herself into my arms. George, you're so kind. I love you so much. I held her tightly and gently patted her back, but that strange masculine fragrance went straight into my nostrils. It was the aquatic woody scent that Makoto frequently used. The day of Willow's class reunion, she unusually invited me. In the past, she always said that because I was not familiar with her classmates, she was afraid that I would feel awkward, and so she didn't let me go. When Willow took me into the private room, 
Everyone was laughing at Bokoto. When others saw Willow arrive, they hooted even harder. Hey, the most talented and beautiful couple in our class is finally reunited. Indeed, it was such a pity back then. Now that Makoto is back after years abroad, Willow, you should reconnect with him. Willow, Makoto said that he didn't have a girlfriend in the three years he was abroad. He must have a lot of energy built up now, he can definitely make you feel like you're in cloud nine. Willow gave a playful look at those making fun of her, and gently leaned her head on my shoulder, saying, my husband is here, so don't talk nonsense. If he gets jealous and gives me the silent treatment when we get home, I'll take it out on you. Everyone burst into laughter, saying that it was just a joke and that I shouldn't take it to heart. Only Makoto, his face looked bad, and he glared at me coldly, and soon stood up to go to the bathroom. At this time, a man came over to toast to me, I decline, I'm sorry, I'm allergic to alcohol, the man said, are you disrespecting us classmates or Willow? Come on, you have to drink today, I frowned, I really am severely allergic to. Before I could finish my words, the man looked at Willow and complained, Willow, your husband is looking down on us. Willow seemed somewhat distracted and coaxed me, George, just have a drink, I'll buy you medicine when we get back home. I paused for a moment, finally took the wine glass and drank it all. The man finally left satisfied to toast to the next person, and Willow immediately stood up and said, George, you be good and stay here, I'm going to retouch my lipstick. I sat in the private room, out of place, watching like an outsider, as the others talked enthusiastically about what had happened among their classmates before. Suddenly, as someone was moving tables, a wine glass was knocked over and an entire glass of red wine poured all over me, soaking my shirt and pants. The person kept apologizing, and I could only say it was okay, said goodbye to the others and headed to the restrooms to see if I could rinse off with water. In the men's restroom stalls, I heard a familiar voice. Makoto said, you brought him here just to piss me off, didn't you? Willow denied quietly, no, he's my husband, why shouldn't I bring him? Makoto said, dare you say you've forgotten me? Last time at the singles meeting, we shut up. Willow cut him off. That day I was drunk. Don't mention it again. Anyway, I'm married now. We don't have a future. You're lying, Makoto said. I looked at my numb self in the mirror, left the bathroom and returned to the private room. Willow had returned as well. Her lipstick was not retouched and even seemed a lot fainter. A few minutes later, Makoto came back, looking obviously not so good. Due to the effect of the alcohol, a girl amazingly started to confess her feelings to Makoto. Makoto, I've liked you for such a long time. I was held back because of Willow and I didn't dare to, nor could I say anything. Now that she's married and you've been single for so long, can you consider me? I could clearly feel Willow stiffen. The others started to hoot, kiss, kiss, kiss. Makoto pursed his lips, raised his eyes and gazed deeply at Willow. In this life, I will only love Willow. Even if she doesn't love me anymore, I will never change my heart. Willow bit her lip, restraining herself from looking into Makoto's eyes. Seeing Willow's state, Makoto looked sorrowful, picked up a glass of red wine from the table, and poured it into his mouth. Willow suddenly rushed over, grabbed Makoto's wine, and scolded angrily. Are you crazy? Don't you know you're allergic to alcohol? She pulled Makoto up to leave. Let's go to the hospital. I tried to hold on to Willow, wishing she would take me to the hospital too, because I was feeling really bad. However, my allergic reaction to alcohol made it hard for me to speak due to the swelling in my throat. Willow, however, shrugged me off impatiently. George, Makoto has a severe alcohol allergy. Don't be jealous when it's a matter of life and death. Makoto held Willow in his arms, ecstatic. Willow, you still love me, don't you? Willow did not deny it nor did she push him away, she just softly pacified him to go to the hospital. Everyone was concerned about Makoto's condition, and so they all accompanied him to the hospital, leaving me behind. After the classmates' gathering, Willow was extremely guilty towards me. Every day she acted cute then begged for my forgiveness, saying what happened that day was due to her classmates being careless. Her eyes were red-rimmed making the tear mole at the corner of her eye even more vivid. I couldn't bear to see her upset. Afterwards, Willow and I returned to the sweet days of our marriage, 
as if the episode with Makoto had never happened. However, I seemed to be a little unwell, as if that day the alcohol allergy had me walking home alone in the cold. Eventually, my body protested. I had a high fever, 39 degrees. Willa wanted me to go to the hospital, but I hate hospitals. No matter how she begged, I refused to go. It was the first time I saw Willa so anxious. Her eyes were red-rimmed as she applied cold water compresses to my forehead. Her shiny lips kept mumbling, seeing you in such discomfort, I'd rather be sick for you, it's breaking my heart. She kept busy buying medicine, boiling water, and cooking porridge for me, she really seemed to love me. In the evening, she received a phone call, and she seemed to be in a hurry. George, there is something in the production crew that I need to take care of, be good and rest well. I'll be back soon, she leaned over to leave a kiss on my foray. I slightly turned my head, avoiding the kiss. Willow was taken aback, I said, it's contagious. But my eyes kept watching her, trying to detect a trace of guilt on her face. However, her smile was still perfect. Willow cooed sweetly, I'll never get tired of George. I spoke again, my voice a little begging, can you not go today? I just hoped that her departure would be a little hesitant, but she didn't. Willow gently reassured me, the production crew issue is urgent, they need me to attend a meeting to solve it. I'll be back soon, my dear. Just wait for me at home. I didn't say anything else, just watched her leave. But I just felt really cold all over. After about half an hour, a message suddenly popped up on WeChat. I clicked on it and it was a photo and a 30 second video. In the photo, Willow was in a sexy bunny girl outfit on the bed, posing in all sorts of difficult positions, her expression charming and expectant. It was a side I'd never seen before. The video had no image, just sound. The entwined panting sounds through the screen, I could feel the intimate entanglement on the other end. Makoto's voice, you said he has a fever, would that make you feel more comfortable? Willow moaned sultrily, don't mention him. Darling, you're the best. My blood instantly froze, my heart ached as if it was being tightly gripped, and even breathing was difficult. That night Willow didn't come back, the next day, the entertainment news broke the front page headline from Jade Lady to Lady of Desire. Does Mary W. Surname actress rekindle old romance? Which swept all platforms. Dot dot in the news. There was a blurry video of two people kissing under the dim street light. They then walked hand in hand into the villa. On the trending searches for Willow's extramarital affair, I also saw keyword searches involving my name. Hash George. Loyal lover hash. Hash George. Stand in hash. Hash George. Jilted husband hash. The netizens were in an uproar. Willow and her first love are the real deal. Everyone else is just a foil. They should be together. The one who's not loved is the third wheel. Even if George tried his best to marry Willow, what's the use? He can't get Willow's heart. I support Willow's divorce to pursue true love. There are also comments from a completely different camp. Can those brain dead fans have some moral integrity? Willow is married to George. This is infidelity during marriage. Cheaters are the most disgusting. I think the most disgusting one is Makoto. It was Makoto who didn't want to give up the opportunity to study abroad and broke up with Willow. Now he regrets it and comes back, trying to seduce a married woman. That's right, Makoto is the most shameless one. Makoto is a disaster. Willow's agent's calls were frantically jumping on my phone screen. I didn't answer. But he was persistent and sent me a message begging me to clarify for Willow if this scandal breaks out, we will have to pay a huge penalty for breach of contract, by then Willow will be completely ruined. Ruined. But it seems that everyone has forgotten. Everything Willow has was given by me. I edited a message on social media, wrong person, no infidelity. Willow is fine. We are fine. But at the same time I sent out this message. Willow posted a photo. It was a household register. Important information was blurred but the marital status column, it was unmarried, she said. I've never been married, Makoto is not a homewrecker, he's good, if you have anything, come at me, don't scold him. In an instant, I became the most ridiculous joke on the internet, and those fans who claimed that true love is invincible were mocking me under my social media comments, is it so cool to be a stand-in? Clearly not married why admit to being married, so what if you've had a wedding? Only with a certificate is it legal, 
causing my sister and her first love to be misunderstood and cyberbullied. George, you're really vicious. S-I-M-P. Clown. No matter what you do, you're no match for Makoto. Stop acting on your own. You'll never get Willow's heart. Who said I want to get Willow's heart? When Willow came back, I was sitting in the living room. As soon as she entered the door, she rushed into my arms and hugged me tightly. My hand was terribly cold. Willow explained to me, George, listen to me. The news is all messed up. The angle is wrong. There was no kiss. It's just that I got sand in my eyes. Makoto just helped me blow it out. Do you believe me or not? Don't be silent. I'm scared. I didn't intentionally reveal that we didn't get a certificate. I just... Just feel that Makoto is innocent. He shouldn't be scolded. Cyberbullying is too scary. He can't handle it. George, you're so good. You'll understand me, right? My eyes suddenly became terribly sour. My heart was like being put on a grill. Being burnt until there was nothing left. Willow's scandal turned into a farce with everyone's clarification. Makoto took this opportunity to enter the entertainment industry. Capital always stirs up topics to borrow traffic. Soon, Willow and Makoto were filming together. They were photographed by the paparazzi multiple times on the set sharing snacks, comforting each other. The way they looked at each other was so affectionate that it could nauseate people. And I've become the broad-minded bro of the netizens. Willow also went from being cautious at first for fear that I would be jealous, to later seemingly believing that no matter what excessive things she did, I loved her and couldn't leave her, and she became blatant. The night the drama crew finished filming, I received a call from Willow. She said she was feeling very uncomfortable and wanted to go home, asking me to pick her up. I was so anxious that I didn't even wear a coat. When I left the house, it was pouring rain outside. The car was sent for maintenance. I braved the rain to hail a taxi. When I arrived at the hotel, I looked like a drowned rat, pushing open the door. I saw Willow straddling Makoto's lap and everyone's cheering, passionately kissing around his neck. Finally, someone noticed my embarrassment. Willow, George is here to pick you up. Everyone's gaze was focused on my face. I was soaked all over, rainwater flowed down from my hair tips, and the hem of my pants was full of mud. Willow was drunk, pointed at me and laughed, telling the others, look, he looks like a dog. At this moment, everyone's face was somewhat panicked, but after observing that I didn't get angry, they were all shocked and looked at each other, as if mocking that the rumored broad-minded bro really enjoys being cuckolded. Willow's agent seemed unable to bear it. Willow, go home with George. Willow was drunk. I'm not done playing. I'm not going back. Isn't calling him here just to verify that he obeys me. If I tell him to come, he must come. If I tell him to leave, he must leave. Willow's agent frowned tightly. She didn't care about other people's opinions. Willow, George is your husband. You keep pushing him out like this, trampling his face under your feet and crushing it. One day he won't be able to bear it. Weren't you posting on social media every day saying how happy you are with George? You even said you wanted to have George's child. Aren't you afraid that one day he will really leave you? Won't you regret it? I stood in place, not saying a word. I just subconsciously touched the medicine in my pocket. Emergency contraceptive, Willow, as if hearing a joke, said, No, George loves me to death. He will absolutely not leave me. Even if I kick him away, he will follow me like a dog. As soon as these words came out, everyone's faces changed, and they looked at me carefully, but my expression didn't change at all. I looked at Willow and said calmly, you continue to play, I'll go first. Willow's smile stiffened a bit, she wanted to stand up and hold me, but she was quietly held down by Makoto, he held his forehead as if he was feeling very uncomfortable. Willow, I think I accidentally drank some wine just now, I'm a bit allergic, it's very uncomfortable, I glanced at them indifferently, turned around and left, out of the hotel, the rain had stopped. The cold wind made my mind terrifyingly clear, my heart was like being stirred by a blunt knife, it hurt so much that I couldn't catch my breath, even my body couldn't help but tremble. I hailed a taxi, go to the cemetery. I sat at the gate of the cemetery all night, dare not going. The crazy vibration of the phone pulled me back from the extremely painful and dark memories. It was a call from Willow, George. Last night Makoto and I were photographed by the paparazzi in some misleading photos. The company asked me to clarify, you come to help me. 
Then several photos were sent to my WeChat. I clicked to look. That's not just misleading. It can be said to be explicit photos. But just when I saw Willow in the photo, my pupils suddenly shrank. My heart was like being held by a frozen hand, suffocating and wanting to vomit. I forced myself to endure the suffocating pain and asked hard, where are you? Willow seemed to be sure that I would definitely go to help her clarify these scandals. Her tone was light, just downstairs of the company. I ran towards the road like a madman, taking a taxi to the company. Sure enough, many media reporters gathered at the gate, craning their necks to look at the gate. When they saw me get out of the car, they swarmed towards me. Mr. George, is the scandal true? Mr. George, are you willing to be cuckolded for love? What do you think of netizens saying you are Makoto's stand-in? I seemed to hear nothing, just pushed through the crowd and walked towards the company, striding into Willow's restroom and violently pushing the door open. At this time Willow was being intimate with Makoto. Willow saw me, panicked subconsciously, wanted to push Makoto away, but was held back by Makoto. What are you afraid of? Does he dare to get angry? I walked towards Willow. My eyes were blood red. Willow's tear mole at the corner of her eye was really gone. My hands and feet were terribly cold. The pain in my heart surged like a storm. Even my lips couldn't control the trembling. Willow saw me like this for the first time. She was a bit scared. Makoto on the side wanted to stop me, but was kicked away by me. My hand grabbed Willow's neck. My lips were trying hard to suppress the trembling. Where is your mole at the corner of your eye? Willow looked at me in horror. Her hands wanted to forcefully pry open my hands, let go of me. I am Willow. I still stare at her dead. Where is your tear mole? Makoto rushed up, trying to pull me away, but was again thrown aside by me. Willow cried and said, I had it removed. Makoto said, he didn't like it so I had it removed. I suddenly felt as if I had lost all my strength. The hand that was choking Willow instantly let go. My heart was like being hammered repeatedly. I closed my eyes tightly and finally looked up at Willow, who allowed you to remove it. Willow was still in the illusion that I deeply loved her, glaring at me. George, are you crazy? Dare to treat me like this? Isn't it just a mole? I want to remove it and I did. Believe it or not, I want to divorce you. After saying that, she looked at me triumphantly, as if she had grasped my lifeblood. I looked at her calmly, without a ripple in my eyes. Okay, divorce. Willow's eyes flashed with panic, she wanted to come forward and hold my hand. No, I don't want to divorce. I just, I said, indifferently, from now on, you and I have nothing to do with each other. I was walking aimlessly like a walking corpse. Gradually, my thoughts began to blur. I've never met my mother. My grandmother told me she ran away as soon as I was born. My father, a drunkard, drowned himself in alcohol every day. He would beat me up whenever he was upset, when I was little. There was never a good spot on my body, always a blend of new wounds and old ones. Every time I was bruised and bloody, crying for my grandmother to stop my father, she would always favor him, consoling me, all she heard from me, your father's just drunk, he harbors resentment against your mother and needs to vent. Just bear with it a little longer, my good grandson. Back then, I stood on the edge of a cliff, looking down at the raging waves below, I didn't know what death was. I just knew that jumping down would set me free. Just as I closed my eyes and prepared to take the plunge, a voice called out from behind me. Hey, kid, you want to die? I was startled, almost stumbling off the edge. The pebbles beneath my feet were kicked down, instantly swallowed by the sea, without making a splash. At that moment, an immense urge to survive surged within me. No, I did not want to die. I turned around to look at the person who spoke. She was wearing grungy clothes, her hair was disheveled like a bird's nest, she looked a few years older than me and was smiling at me, the mole at the corner of her eye was ostentatious. At that time, I didn't know that she would become the light of my dark life. The only light, I shrank my neck, watching her carefully with fear. According to her later recount, she said, I looked like an ugly chick at that time, ugly to death and timid. She asked, hey, where are your parents? I was stunned. After a long pause, I muttered, dead, they're dead. She raised her eyebrows and looked at me with her chin up, as if she saw right through me. When I couldn't stand her piercing gaze any longer, she finally spoke. Kid, come with me. Be a vagabond. So, 
I began my life as a vagabond, trailing her like a little tail, whatever she did, I did, if she told me to go east, I never went west. Wherever we went, we lived off picking up trash, if we were lucky and found a lot of bottles, we could afford a meal. If we were unlucky and found only a few, we'd have to settle for bread, and when we felt sleepy, we'd find a toilet in a park to sleep. Those were the happiest days of my life, I didn't have to live in constant fear of being beaten. And it seemed that someone truly loved me. One evening, when we hadn't found any trash and had been hungry all day, we were lying on a bench in the park. Feeling uncomfortable with hunger, she began to tell me stories. She told me about the story of Cinderella eating an apple and falling in love with a frog. Since then, I have always believed that Cinderella liked apples and had some unique tastes, particularly for frogs. Only when I chanced upon a fairy tale book did I realize that it was Snow White who ate the apple, and the frog was not literally a frog. Holding the fairy tale book, I couldn't help crying, because she never had a childhood. No one had ever told her these stories, but she wanted me to be happy. But now, they found out that I'm not an orphan and that I have family. They wanted to get rid of me, as if they were finally throwing away a hot potato. They wanted to send me back to that dreadful place. So, I was back in that dark and terrifying home. The only difference was the beatings were more severe. I had thought I was going to die several times, finally, my grandmother was beaten to death by my father, and I was on the verge of death too. I watched as my father approached me step by step with a hoe in his hand. Surprisingly, I felt calm inside, my only regret was that I couldn't see her. As my father raised the hoe to strike me, I closed my eyes, waiting for death. But the next second, there was a painful grunt, I opened my eyes. It was her, seeming crazed with rage, she hacked my father to death, blood splattered on her face. I was stunned. She thought I was scared silly and rushed over to hug me, gently patting my back. Kid, don't be scared. No one can bully you anymore. Later, she was sentenced to seven years for excessive self-defense and manslaughter. I visited the prison every day to see her, but she never saw me. She only relayed a message through the prison guard, asking me to get into university. She promised to see me once I got into university. All I could do was study hard. I got into the best university, but she still wouldn't see me. I had to work hard, hoping to stand in a conspicuous place so that she could find me at a glance when she wanted to see me. Just as I became a so-called computer genius and a business upstart, I received a call from her. Out in the cold wind, I listened to the sound of breathing over the phone. Even though it was an unknown number, my sixth sense told me it was her. She said, Kid, you've become very wealthy. The moment her voice came through, I burst into tears, my emotions cascading into a heart-wrenching cry. She laughed, Stop crying, you look ugly when you cry. My voice hoarse, I asked. Where are you? She said. Turn around. I turned abruptly, and there she was, standing across the street, smiling at me. The mole on the corner of her eye was as beautiful and clear as ever. Just like the first time I saw her, the moment finally came when the light turned green, she opened her arms wide and ran towards me. The next moment, the screeching sound of a speeding car echoed in my ears. She was hit and knocked over, falling in a pool of blood. In that moment, my ears seemed to be ringing, unable to hear anything else. I rushed towards her as if I had gone mad, trying to cover her bleeding wound with my hand. She was in pain, her body convulsing, and blood gushing from her mouth. Yet, she smiled at me. Dot dot her last words on earth were, Kid, it's been a long time. I disappeared from the world for half a month. My switched off phone received countless messages and calls from Willow. Looking at the information about Willow on my phone made me feel annoyed, so I threw the phone directly into the trash. When I returned home, Willow seemed to have been waiting for a long time. She rushed over and hugged me tight. She was sobbing. George, where have you been? I've missed you so much. I don't want to be apart from you. I don't. I don't like anyone else. I only like you. You love me so much. There's no way you could bear to break up with me. I know when you said you wanted to break up, you were just angry. Yes, everyone thought I was deeply in love with Willow. I lifted her chin, gently touching the spot where her mole had been removed. There was still a slight white mark. I calmly said, on what grounds, Willow was taken aback. She mumbled, what grounds, I said, 
You lost the only thing that gave you the right to act so presumptuously with me. How dare you show up in front of me? It seemed that Willow had finally figured everything out. She looked at me with wide eyes of disbelief. You were so good to me, just because of the mole at the corner of my eye. She couldn't believe it. No, it's not possible. How can you be so good to me for just a mole? No, it's impossible. George, I know you were just angry. I will never contact Makoto again. I will quit the entertainment industry right now. I will have your kids. We. Oui. I had completely lost patience in looking at this face. Willow, I never loved you. You should have been glad you had that mole. You look somewhat like her because of it. Looking at her tear-streaked face, I only felt nauseated and disgust. But now, you don't resemble her anymore. Willow's eyes were redolent. At that moment, she looked lost and helpless, as if she had lost the entire world. It was as if she was mocking herself. I knew there was something off when I always felt like you were looking at someone else through me. Everyone said you were crazy about me, even I thought so. But you never got jealous of me, never gave me any romance. You treated me well, like a robot completing a task, gave me everything I wanted, but never gave me sincerity. I went too far just to make you jealous, but you never cared. I thought you endured it because you loved me too much. She yelled heart-trenchingly. Only now do you tell me, I was just a replacement. George, you're so heartless. I coldly watched her, only feeling annoyed. Later on, I called security to have Willow thrown out of the mansion. I didn't want to have anything to do with Willow again, but one day I suddenly received an email, like a depth charge. It shattered my heart. The email said that the hit and run driver was someone else. It wasn't the person who was sentenced to death. They wanted me to transfer 5 million before they would tell me. I couldn't think whether this person was a scammer or not. I transferred 5 million to him with trembling hands. That person sent a recording of a phone call. It was Makoto negotiating with someone to pay 50 million for the person to take the blame, promising to ensure the person's family's livelihood for a lifetime. Listening to the recording. My chest was heaving dramatically. My entire body ached like it was being torn apart. The pain was like a filleting knife scraping along every inch of bone in her body, extending all the way to my heart. Everything about Willow was given by me, ever since I announced that all companies I own were forbidden to cooperate with Willow. Willow's career took a precipitous fall. Netizens commented, Wow, is George really standing his ground this time? Fun fact. George used to be a rising star in the business sector. He was once dubbed a business prodigy. But one day he looked as though he had aged 20 years and suddenly announced that he would no longer manage the company. He handed over all his shares for others to manage. The next time he appeared in the news was when he announced he was going to marry Willow. Wow, is George really that powerful? I thought he was nothing but a lapdog. Tonight, I attended my first business gathering in many years. As soon as I arrived at the banquet hall, I saw Willow, arm in arm with Makoto, as soon as she saw me. She hurriedly tried to let go, but Makoto held her tight. The moment I saw Makoto, there was a flicker of cold sternness in the depths of my eyes. The other company presidents came over one after another to toast to me. And as we were all chatting and laughing, Makoto walked over. Makoto came over with Willow, a face full of bragging. George, you've always been indifferent towards the company's affairs, right? Willow bit her lip lightly, her face full of hope that I came out of jealousy for her. But I didn't even want to give a single glance to this shameless couple. Makoto was persistent. He handed me an invitation. George, Willow and I are getting married in a month. We hope you can come. Willow's face changed immediately, looking at me nervously. I raised my wine glass, a tilt of my wrist, the red wine completely drenched the invitation. I said expressionlessly, You're bound to have an extraordinary, unforgettable wedding. Today Makoto and Willow got married. The whole process was live-streamed. In the live-stream, all the comments were condemnations, full of scolding. But the wedding scene was indeed warm. I sat next to a tombstone in the cemetery, gently touching the tombstone, with the live-stream of the wedding playing on the phone next to me. A sky full of white roses, the red carpet, the white wedding dress, Willow held the bouquet, but her face didn't have too many smiles. Instead, she was constantly searching for someone in the crowd. But Makoto was smiling with happiness, he said. Willow, after all, it's still us. Under the witness of the pastor, 
the two exchanged vows. Just when the pastor asked Willow if she was willing, a swarm of police suddenly rushed in at the scene, handcuffing Makoto and Willow on the spot. Everyone was scared and screaming. All the comments in the live stream were asking what happened, and others were cursing the two, saying they deserved it. I watched the chaos in the live stream without expression. Makoto, Willow, neither of you can escape. On the day of the trial, I sat in the courtroom, watching the most expensive and top lawyer I hired fighting passionately. I only had one request for the lawyer, sentence them harshly, sure enough. There's a reason why the best is expensive. The lawyer presented a series of evidence, not only for hit and run, but also for involvement in the gray industry, even drug abuse and trafficking, multiple charges, death penalty, as for Willa. For concealing the facts, she was also sentenced to three years. I sat by the tombstone, gently brushing off the dust on it and lightly kissing it. My heart was pounding. Sister, I've wanted to tell you for a long time, I love you very much.